On this episode, we're gonna take another stab at getting the Monza running. She's just been fighting us, but I've already missed one race. Guy ain't missing another. It's in like three or four, six days. It's coming up pretty soon. And of course that starts with pulling her out of the trees the right way. This ought to work just fine. So you just gotta ease them. They'll follow along reasonably well. There, keep going. Let's get her right in the middle of the sun so it's really miserable. Shut her down. Well, we're back on the Monza today. Last episode, I just, I had it with it. Couldn't get the old sparkulators to fire. We put in a rotor, cap, one good spark plug wire, tested on some digitals with the old test light, and uh, I thought, well, maybe it's this little radio capacitor, and this little guy stores up energy, and that's what shoots the lightning bolts. So we'll try this, and then after I put all that money into it, Jessica's going to check what we should have checked in the first place, which is just the ground, because it's probably just not grounded right and would have taken 42 seconds to fix that a week ago. So, here we go. So here's where, kind of how she's been sitting, you can basically see that I just said, eh, and threw her all back in. Uh, this little guy sits right in there and that does that thing uh, Jessica's gonna put that in because well I'm lazy the capacitor just has a button connector so the wire just pushes on it it's really easy Well, Jessica's finishing up that. Let's go look at the ground here. And let's see, got a really bad connector. And then, yeah, see it's just bolted to the floor pan, which basically means she just has a body ground. And if we look at the engine, unless I'm missing it, it doesn't really look like there's anything going from the engine directly to the body, although they're solid mount-ish looking thingies. Uh, I don't know. We'll try to get the meter on that and test the ground somehow. You got her all done? Got it. Well, this is mind-bottling, but I'll get through it. I'm going to grab a ground off the engine head, since that's where the distributor seated into. And then I'm going to take my positive to the starter relay and see what kind of voltage we got here. And that says 12, 12.5. So now what I'm going to do is try to get a cranking voltage. So I'll take the same exact ground and I'm going to run it to the ignition module side. And then Jessica's going to crank it for me. And then we'll see what kind of voltage is actually getting to the distributor. Let me make sure I've still got a good ground. Five. Okay, right now I'm at 12.5 here too. I'll have her crank it. Go ahead. So, drops from 12.5 to 9.4. Uh, so I'm thinking either wiring sucks between the two or we do in fact have a weak ground. The easiest thing for me to do is just grab a big cable and smash her onto the head and bolt it to the body somewhere. So I think we're going to do that and then we've got a full bonded path for the ground from the battery to the floor to the fender to the head to the distributor. And then we'll throw the old lightning whirler cap back on and oh, please baby Jesus let there be spark. All right, so we're going to take this from the intake manifold to the fender basically because we're just really, really lazy and it's easier to go from here to here.
Guy wants to keep his grounds clean, so I took the old electrotronic screw gun here with the wire wheel and got some bare metal showing there and clean that up as good as I can. And the plan is just a, a cable from there to here and, and then maybe she'll be all, you know, goodly. Snag it on there. Mm -hmm. Gold bolt over budget. You gotta reach under that. Yeah, there you go. Can you get that far with your T-Rex arm? Shut up. I got it. So the GM HEIs will run all the way down to 6 volts. I mean, they should fire on 6, but you really don't want to see below 9 volts consistently. 9 is kind of borderline-ish for myself, anywho. And you want 12 to 14 on them if you want good high performance out of them. And I don't know. We'll see if this $6 here Walmart battery cable will give us more of a ground. We'll test it right now. All right, same digital test. What did we have last time? Nine, five? Yep. Nine, four, nine, five? I don't know. You guys know what it was. Nine something. We got 12, five there. 12, five, crank it. Okay. Got 10, eight. So, a little bit more. About a volt and a two teacups or whatever that metric is. And if you're a Canadian watching, then maple syrups. Okay, I got my sparkulator hooked up again. and We just tested that on the old drug runner, aka Jessica's Daily Driver. Just to make sure that that's still working, and it does. So this is it. She's going to fire. Go ahead and flip the switches and hit the button. <laughs> starter jam great that's good so this is where it's going to get interesting because really the only thing that's left is the entire car is bad which that's not it or it's the distributor because the pickup shot in it and i've already put about 48 gallons of brake clean down that so I'm thinking it's that and no one's going to have a distributor to a 77 mons in this town so we'll get on the old interwebs and see what happens so we're going to have to splice this episode together because you're probably not going to see us till December, but we'll make it happen. I really do want to make that race Saturday, though. Yeah. So we'll start calling around and see what happens. <laughs> we got parts and we're back. And we're going to make a run. There's about a 4% chance. Guy and a girl were waiting on one of these lightning whirlers. This is a bad one. And you can tell that because of the way that that one is. And the new one's already in. But I'll show you on it. And she's just been sitting. Nothing's changed. Oh, other than this. Uh, I've had a battery charger on it for about a month now, so that's nice and boiled dry, I'm sure. And Jessica put a new switch in it. She was smart enough to realize that the switch was probably faulty. And after we did some, uh, apparently they're called continuity tests and uh, impedance tests, showed that the switch was only given intermittently three to six volts to the distributor as well so it was probably a five dollar switch and not a hundred and eighty dollar distributor show us me from the beginning so here's the new lightning unit and also just a reminder we put a coil oh there's my test light dang it it's broken. uh coil whirly woo in one good wire and I think we're back to where we're basically just going to try to get it to fire mm -hmm. and then if it fires we'll continue to put more money in it that we're never going to get out okay plan I wanted to check on this more for me than the new fellers because I just couldn't remember but she's all coming back around now I got the dual stage fuel system it's it's NASCAR stuff you wouldn't understand and poured a little more fire maker in the tank, so she's half now. And I have no idea where 
that gas came from but she she smells like deck stain so that should be just fine I had the label on these switches and I was getting confused we got battery black velvet and then of course the sparkulators but that one's a little wobbly but she'll be fine and then I got the hood prop here from Harbor Freight and that does okay so we're gonna prime the pump see if it gets a fire maker up in the carb so uh, you want to hit the black velvet switch Okay, you guys can't see it, but we definitely got some fire maker shooting in. Shut her off. So, let's crank on it. Okay, light all the switches. Give her a shot. Try it again. Yes! It fired! I got it. Hold on. Again. 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 Oh, I think we're gonna get it. Try it again. Hold on. Again. Finally, it's alive. Okay, so other than the fire we had, I got this giant vacuum leak, so I'm gonna take a vacuum plugger off her and get them a nap up, jam that in there. That should make her idle. I got her idle once I got the old finger in there. And that looks that looks factory. I'll leave that one alone. I think that's just fine. There was a lot of smoke and flames and melting stuff down there, so if we just close our eyes and ignore that, and I'm gonna clamp down the distributor, and then Jessica's gonna put sparkulators and wires in her, right? Yep. Good. Wish you guys could see the smoke. Get a little bit on these lights, but on your TV screens, you can't see her just bellowing out. But the good news is, there ain't no skeeters in here anymore. Oh, what do we got? First plug looks just fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but Jessica insisted on changing it anyway, so I'm gonna let her just continue on that and I don't know, do cold snacks, I guess. Oh, I could find you the wires. Knocks in our inventory bins. Uh, somewhere in here. What do we got? Oh, oh got a little filter for it. Here we go. Looks like it. Omni Sparks. That should work just fine.
Sparks of wires. Looks like the danged old squirrels got to them. Jesus. I don't think I've ever seen that before. But the good news is, it looks like it's firing on all fours. All the spark plugs look like that. Oh yeah. A little lean, but we got a vacuum leak the size of the Grand Canyon, so that'll cause that. It's fine. All right, now that Jessica did all the hard work, got the spark laters in. I got the vacuum cleaner gauge here. I'm gonna snag that into the carburetor. And I'm just gonna play around with the idle mixture screw until this sucker goes to the bigger number. And I'm guessing that it's not gonna idle at the right RPM, and we'll screw around with that. Once we get our idling right, basically the rest of the goal today is just to get this piece of turd to roll out of here on its own power. I don't even know if it has a clutch, or if it works, or even if the shifter moves, so that should be a lot of fun. Okay, this is hard on the guy's back. Gotta get ready. Oops. Yeah. Okay. That's in there. Got my jabber. Give her some thunder! Yeah, go ahead. Starter's good. Keep trying. This time. Again. Why does it do that? Go ahead. All of the switches up? Yeah. Go again. Now we got fire. Go ahead. More gooder. So we gained about four inch hookagajidges on the old vacuum cleaner gauge. And you can hear it kind of smooth out a little bit better for a guy. And, and then we dropped the idle way down just as I suspected. I don't know why she was idling at 114 billion RPM. You don't really need that unless you're going for the old go starts. Okay, now. We might as well just put way more money than we're ever going to get out of this and throw some tires and wheels on it. <sighs> Bad idea. Even though that tire is really nice, the other ones, they just, I don't think they're gonna, you know, I, the they're just, the chances of them rolling on that are not good. So we're gonna step her up and throw her onto these arrows here. And uh, this ought to do the trick. And every single one of you have seen these tires. I got them on the Ebays, and uh, them units come on the mail trucks, and that's from 1989. Complete set of four, matching. This side looks fine. I think this will come right out, actually. Look at that, brand new. Can't even tell. About another four inches. That jack's really good. I got that at Harbor Freight like 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, I didn't even do the old backspace calculator, so hopefully this works. I was trying to get them to snag out a little bit, cornering. There you go. That's actually pretty dang good. Yeah, <clears throat> planned all that. Lots of time spent. I'll go ahead and bring her down nice and easy. Perfect. Hurry up, get her under there. <sighs> My jack is good. <sighs> get out of here. <sighs> Is that going to fit in there? Get your back in there. Use all your back before anything else. There we go. Oh, that looks awesome. Brings her up quite a bit, actually. New tires and wheels are on. If you're curious where I got those, I just googled cheapest tires ever made in America. And I think they came from Jags. But look at this. That thing is made to go left. I mean, they definitely did some work on her. And she's a go left -er car. Probably no rights. And all the stickers probably should have gave that away. Even back here, you can see the old go left. So... We'll work on that later. Right now I'm going to try to fit in that really tiny seat and dump the clutch in her and see if we can get her out. Yeah. Okay. I think I need to just cut a hole in here. Where do my legs go now? Other side? Maybe they go over here. Ah, I'm a back later. Oh, okay. I'm basically on the other side of the car. Over the shifter. That's stuck. Over the shifter. Uh, that was easy. Okay, seat belt. This isn't even close. It's good enough. What sounds to you like a violin and a piano is uh, actually the clutch, and I think it works. Shifter moves. Let's see if we can get her out of here. Are all three switches up? Monza. Monza. Oh. Come on now. It's okay. Just start. You're gonna have to do it. brakes and there's also no reverse well I think that's gonna do her for this episode mainly because she's snagged up in the trees here and I got no reverse so 
we're going to use the old horsepower and snip her back into the shed, which is billing with all sorts of sweat. Oh, we left black marks. You there. did leave black marks. That's pretty cool. Anyway, what should we do with this thing now at 42% runs, kind of ish? That's a giant fly. I have no idea why you guys like this car. It's completely mind bottling, but give me some ideas. What do you think? I think we need to take it to the track and run it. Test on her? Test on it. <laughs> we can get it there. So yeah, give me some ideas. I have no idea. But as always, thanks for watching. Appreciate it very much. Hit subscribe, hit the like button. And if you want to, check out that join stuff. It's pretty snazzy. See you next time. Bye. This is gonna suck.